What's up, Impact Online? Come on, let's put our hands together tonight. Let's worship. Come on, let's sing this out. I don't want to be on my phone. Somebody I'm not, but it's not what I want Tell me there's another way All the lights are chasing now fade All the cheap thrills were only time wasted Tell me why society's plan should define who I am Surely there's a higher way All of my best friends are sick of pretending Trying to find the next high Cause the high never lasts I'ma go another way All the lights are chasing now fading Dylan was right, the times they are changing Tell me why society's plan should define who I am Oh, surely there's a highway All of my best friends are sick of pretending you students no matter where you are right now I encourage you just to enter into a time of worship even though it feels a little bit different we can worship our father no matter where we are no matter what's going on around us he's worthy of it all
Mala Singh. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all, you can have it all. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all. You Come on, that's it. Let's sing it again. Nothing is a sacrifice Use me how you want to, God Have your throne within my heart Come on, let's sing it one more time And I hear you What's up, Impact Online? Welcome back! Welcome back, everyone. Yeah, we are seriously so glad you're joining us. We do not take it for granted that you are here, kind of, at your house, but you're here with us in spirit, and we're there with you in spirit, too. Which really matters. All right, yeah. July 4th is coming up. We hope you guys have a blast. We hope you are safe. Eat a lot of watermelon. Elijah, do you like watermelon? Dude. Yeah, a little bit of salt on that thing. Oh, mm. there we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Mm. If you're messing with fireworks, be safe. Don't burn anything up. Don't blow anything up. Don't be that guy or yeah. girl. And uh, make sure that if you do light a firework, you don't lay it sideways. But that's a story for another time because that's, that's dangerous. So, Pastor Nate, I really like your shirt. Thanks, man. Good segue. August Thanks. 5th through the 8th is spring <laughs> retreat, and we want you there. It is going to be an incredible weekend. We believe in it. We believe in you, and we want to see you there, and we want to see five other people there. So you need to sign up. Stop what you're doing right now. Grab your phone. Go to this link right here. Or there. Or the there, 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 in the comments, anywhere, everywhere. Go to that link. Sign up for a retreat right now. And we want you to go so bad, we're going to play a video. And during the video, click the link, sign up, check it out. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. Hey, and we are wrapping up BRB Crying. We really hope that God has spoken to you just like he has to us. And we just want to make sure that you guys get the most out of this message. So 
get your notepad, get comfy, get some snacks, get your Bible, and let's see what God has to say to us through Pastor Caleb. Check it out! Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Youth Online. I don't know that we ever would have expected um, to be back here, but we're excited for tonight and for all that God is going to do in this service. Um, As you know, we are finishing out week three of BRB Crying. So everybody say it with me, BRB Crying crying. Type in the chat, BRB, crying. Um, It's been just such an awesome series. Last week, Elijah crushed it, and he did such a great job. So, you know, comment at him in the chat. Let him know how great he is, how awesome he was. Um, We just want to continue to celebrate each other and encourage each other. Um, And so tonight is going to be another great night. And as we wrap up this series again, it's just all about our feelings. It's all about, you know, how we feel, what to do with those feelings, even some of the different feelings that we can feel. And so tonight, as we talk about this series, as we wrap it up, um, I really want to take you guys with me to look at Exodus chapter three. And we're going to start in verse one. And here's what it says. It says, one day Moses was tending to the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. And there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it did not burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. And when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, and here I am, Moses replied. And I want to stop right there just real fast, because I love that in this passage, you know, Moses is just tending some sheep. He's not doing anything special. He's really just minding his own business, doing his thing when God chooses to show up. And I really believe that, you know, maybe today you had a really great day. Maybe you didn't have the best of days. Maybe um, you've just been minding your own business and, and, and watching this, you know, message. You have no expectation of what God wants to do. But let me tell you, lean in, just a little bit. Like Moses says, hey, that's amazing. I have to go take a closer look. Just lean in a little bit tonight because I promise you God wants to speak something directly to you just as he did to Moses. And so in verse five, here's what it says. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals for you're standing on holy ground. And I know y'all are at home, so maybe, you know, you have your shoes on. Just go ahead, take your shoes off. Just kick them off. You're standing on holy ground. If you don't have shoes on, go put some on, then you can kick them off. You know, it works the same way. And it says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. And then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of everything they could ever want. The land where the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, all the ites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. And in this passage, I think it's just kind of crazy. You know, you can notice all of the I statements that God makes. He says, I have certainly seen the oppression. I have heard the cries of distress. I am aware of the suffering. And so I have come down to rescue them. But it's interesting in all those eyes, the way he wants to do that, the way he wants to rescue his people is in verse 10, where he says, but I am sending you, sending you. I want you to go. You must lead my people out of Egypt. And so, you know, here in a second, we'll see Moses response to this call that God is putting on him to this, you know, mission that God has for him. And I'd love to be able to tell you that Moses was like, let's do it. Like all gung ho, ready to go. Come on, God, like you, you better hold me back. Like, you know, because there's nothing that's going to stop me from doing this. But in fact, the exact opposite happened. You know, Moses, he just begins to make excuses uh, because he's insecure. 
He has a lot of insecurities. And so tonight, as we talk about BRB crying, you know, there are all sorts of reasons we might say that or type that or whatever. Maybe you're typing that in the chat right now, you know, because you're mad, because you're sad, maybe even just because you're happy, something's so hilarious, you're like BRB crying, like I just can't even handle this right now. But in this moment, Moses is like BRB crying because he feels insecure. And so I want to take a look just at these a few more verses that talk through the insecurities that Moses faced. He, he protests God multiple times. It says in verse 11, but Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And then in 13, verse 13, it says, but Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? Now he's just like grasping at stuff. Well, who am I supposed to say sent me? You know, he's just trying to make excuses because he feels insecure. In Exodus 4, one, it says, but Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? What if, what if they don't even care? What if they don't listen? What if they don't believe it? Even if I tell them and do all this stuff and obey you. And then Exodus 4, 10, it says, but Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh Lord, I am not very good with words. I never have been. And I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue tied and my words get tangled. So insecurity all over the place in all sorts of different ways. And insecurity really, you know, you can even see it in the life of Moses right here in this passage, it paralyzes us. You know, there is a call of God on your life. There is a purpose that he has for you. But when we feel those insecurities, you know, it it keeps us from taking that next step, whatever the next step may be. It keeps us from moving in faith, whatever that move may be. And so here's the thing, if we want to see all that God has for us in our lives, you know, these insecure things that are in us, we need to figure out what to do about it. We need to figure out maybe how we can get over that so, or, or push through it or something, because otherwise it's just going to paralyze us and we're not going to be able to reach any of those things that God has for us. And I think that a lot of times that's just where we find ourselves. And, and tonight I just want to offer some encouragement, you know, right off the bat, just like Moses, God sees you. Just like he loves Moses, loved Moses, God loves you. Just like he called Moses in, you know, and here he was building this relationship with him. Like God wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to talk to you and he wants to use you. He wants to use you in awesome ways. We just have to be obedient and let him. And so tonight, I think that there's nothing more appropriate to do as we kind of start this message uh, than just to pray and to invite God in. So I just want you to pray with me, um, even in your homes, and invite God into where you're at right now. So Jesus, we just thank you uh, for who you are. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this place, for this message that you've put on my heart. God, I just pray that you would speak through me that it would really pierce every single heart of every person that's listening, God, that any insecurities, anything in us that maybe would cause us to say BRB crying, God, that we would just surrender those to you tonight, God, and that we would recognize that you are with us, you are for us, and you are in us, and we thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. So probably about, I guess, three months ago or so, it was like the end of February, um, we were doing a series called MBDC. Anybody remember MBDC? Shout out to all of our dance crews. You know, you can type in the chat if you were on a dance crew, type in the chat. Maybe if you won, you beat all the other dance crews. I don't know, but doing this awesome series, you know, where we got to have a ton of fun, you know, and you guys danced in just this competition that was hilarious and incredible. Again, all sorts of emotions, you know, that might have made us say BRB crying, but I also know that one of those very first weeks, you know, we we decided we wanted to talk about some topics that maybe we didn't always talk about, some things that maybe were a little harder to preach about, maybe just because we dance around those issues in our lives or we, you know, they're just topics that maybe we don't cover often. And so I remember the week that I preached on hell and all day talking about hell, I'm preparing and I'm, you know, looking up all these different verses and things in the Bible. God, what do you want me to say? And I just remember feeling just this, this expectation that God wanted to do something special that night, that he really wanted to show up and do something incredible. And so I remember even just in pre-service prayer before service, we were, you know, talking and and praying just about the service. And I can continue just to feel this. And I knew that like, there was just going to be a powerful response to, to what, to the message that God wanted me to preach that night. And so I come out, you know, after worship, um, Pastor Nate and Elijah, they're doing announcements and and they have me come up on stage, but 
kind of right as they're doing announcements, I start to notice some really kind of crazy things started going on. First, I like started to feel my hands like tingle a little bit, almost as if like, you know, when your arm falls asleep or something like that, your foot falls asleep, there's like that tingling feeling. And it got like really intense, almost to the point where I like couldn't even like bend my fingers all the way. And so I remember just thinking to myself like, hey, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna grab this microphone and I'm just gonna hold on for dear life, you know, because we've got business to do. Like God wants to show up and speak something awesome tonight. And so I was ready, I was ready to go, even though my hands were like feeling kind of weird, had no idea what that was about. But I go up and I, and I just, I start to talk. And the instant that I start to talk, like I, I recognize that that tingling feeling was also in my mouth. Like it was in my tongue actually. And I, I just couldn't put syllables together. Like I couldn't actually enunciate all the words. It sounded like I'd had like mouth surgery or something like that. I think some of y'all maybe, you know, you even thought that it was some sort of like message illustration of some kind. You had no idea what was going on. But in the moment, I had no idea what was going on either. And so if you weren't there, I want you to go ahead and just watch the short video that will show kind of exactly what happened. What's up, everybody? Guys, I'm not even gonna lie. Whoa. Did you hear that? My tongue is like, it's tingling. I'm not even lying. We just need to take some, some breaths, okay? Because I don't know why I sound like this right now. So see, like crazy, I could not, like the, I, even if I tried, I couldn't actually make the words come out. It was like my tongue was just completely numb. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't talk. And so I had, you know, Elijah come and be my scripture buddy and he would like read through the scriptures. And I remember just as he was doing that, I was praying like, God, you need to fix this. Like there, I know that you've like put this message on my heart to speak tonight and I don't know like what's going on. And the only thing I could think is that the enemy really didn't want me to preach that message that night that there was some opposition that was coming up against me, trying to deter me and keep me from doing what I knew God had told me to do that night. And so I just prayed, Lord, right now, I need you to fix this. I need you to, to make everything in my mouth just work the way that it needs to. And it was like, almost as soon as I said any of that, I felt that feeling just like drain away completely. And you know, I take the microphone back and preach the rest of the message. And it was an incredible night. And the one thing, you know, that's kind of crazy, I remember leaving that night and it was just like, wow, this was some awesome, like miraculous thing where, you know, the enemy was truly, really trying to keep me down, but God showed up and, and it all worked out in the end. You know, I think that night there were like 20 something people that got saved or rededicated their life to Jesus. Like what an incredible thing to celebrate even in spite of the adversity that happened early on in that service. But what I also know is that's not the last time that that happened either. You know, it happened probably a month or so ago at grad weekend at the Rose District when I was just up celebrating some graduates, you know, for how awesome all of you guys are. And I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, this is happening again. Like, what's this about? I have no idea like what's going on. And most recently it just happened this last Saturday night at the Rose District again and, and out of nowhere, you just start to feel maybe that like tingling a little bit. I felt my heart rate even like spike a little bit. And I don't know if it's like nerves, if it's anxiety or what it is, but here's what I do know now is there's kind of an insecurity that I have when I come to speak. Like even today, you know, like as I'm like, hey, what's up Impact BRB crying? Like there's a part of me that's like, is it gonna happen now? Like is my tongue just gonna stop working like right now? And thank the Lord it didn't. And he's, you know, not just giving me this message, but he's helping me to speak it. But I don't know what that's going to look like. Is it going to happen again? Is, is that all? Is it finished? And so now I kind of actually have this insecurity of like, God, what if that keeps happening to me? Like here it is, you've called me, you know, to do ministry and to pastor students and to preach the gospel. But how can I preach the gospel if my mouth's not going to work? And so there's a fear that comes with that. There's insecurity that comes with that. Worry, anxiety, all of those things, even more than there probably already was. But here's the thing, and what I really need you guys to get tonight is that God is bigger than my insecurity. And I need you to just say that as I say it again. God is bigger than my insecurity. Because I don't know what kind of insecurities you may have. Maybe you've never had anything like super crazy, like your tongue just going numb, you know, before happened to you. But what is it in your life that you're insecure about? What is it in, in your life that you know, you, brings you anxiety or worry or just any of those things, fear? Because the other thing that I know is God is bigger than your insecurity. 
And, and that's why, you know, I had you even declare that is even just to start to get that into your mind that, you know, God wants to use you even in spite of your insecurity and he wants to use you to do great things. I honestly debated about whether or not to even tell this story and ultimately got to the point where I felt like the Lord just said, hey, just use it but like, because I can use it. And, and I believe that tonight he's going to use that story just in a powerful way to show you that even me, like I have insecurities in my own life. I struggle with that in my own life. And so we all have insecurity. We all have fears. We all have worries. We all have things in life that make us feel that way, that BRB crying way. And so what do we need to do about that? And I think in order really to answer that question, we need to take a deeper look at Moses' life and, and the insecurities that he had. Because the one thing that I know is if I had to like take a guess at any of your insecurities, um, I probably would guess a few things. And those few things are probably some of the things that Moses also dealt with. And so the first thing that really we see Moses struggle with is that he's insecure in his identity. You know, it says again in Exodus 3, 11 and 13, he protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And this is not Moses, you know, like with amnesia, just like, hey, how did I get here? And like, who even am I? This is Moses, not, not that at all. He's just like, God, I'm nobody. Like, why would you choose me? I'm, I'm no one. Why, why would you want me to go and lead these people? I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Don't you know all the mistakes that I've made, all the choices that I've made that haven't honored you? Like, why me? And he just starts making those excuses. And, and even, you know, as he and God have this dialogue back and forth, it gets to a point where Moses even is just like, well, if I go and I tell them, you know, who am I going to say sent me? If they ask, you know, what your name is. And now I just feel like he's making crazy excuses because he just doesn't want to go because he's so insecure about who he is. And honestly, I feel like a lot of times that's where like the root of all of this comes from, the root of insecurity. The enemy tries to attack your identity to get you to believe that you're not good enough, that you are nobody, that you're not worthy and that you never will be. But none of those things are true. None of those things are true. In fact, you know, he wants us to think that who we are is defined by what we do, that who we are is defined by what we do. But that's not the case. In fact, who we are is not defined by what we do, but what Jesus did. Because here's what I know. Genesis 127 says that we are created in God's image. Genesis 131 says that God said it was good, that all of his creation, you and me, you know, he created us male, female in his image, and it's good. Not bad, not just average, but good. He then says in Galatians 3.26 that in Christ we are children of God. So we're not just good creations. We're actually God's children, you and I, his sons, his daughters. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's masterpiece created new in Jesus. You know, he didn't mess up. These flaws and insecurities that we have that we may look as such weaknesses and bad things to bury and hide away from everybody else, God made us. He knows about those things, but yet he still says that we are his masterpiece. And then Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him we have redemption and forgiveness through his blood. And so who we are is not defined by what we do, but by what Jesus did for us. And so we don't have to worry about our identity because we know that we are sons and daughters of God, that we are, you know, creations, masterpieces that God says are good, that are beautiful, that he loves us, that he sent Jesus to die for us because we were worth that much to him. You know, you're not nothing, you're valuable. And, you know, I, I love all of that, you know, and, and just with God and Moses even, I love his response kind of sandwiched between um, verse 11 and 13 is verse 12 that says, God answered Moses, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have been brought, the, when you've brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. So in addition to just being God's kids, to being God's creation, his masterpiece, I also love that God says, I will be with you. You know, pastor even talked about this, this past Sunday about how in uh, Joshua 1, 5, God says to Joshua, I will be with you just as I was with Moses. And God will be with you just as he was with Moses and with Joshua. So when it comes to whatever God is calling you to, when it comes to just living life in general, we don't have to be insecure because we know that our identity is in Christ and that no matter where we go and what we do, that he is with us. 
The second thing that we see Moses struggle with is that he's insecure in his influence. Exodus chapter four, verse one, Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? And so it's all focused on other people. He, he actually goes from saying like, God, I don't think I can do it. I'm not going to go to, okay, if I go, what if this happens? And what if this happens? What if they don't believe me? What if they don't listen? What if I don't make a difference? And boy, have we ever been there before. God, what if I say yes and I go and I invite all these people to church next Wednesday? What if I invite all these people to go to spring retreat with me or to youth revival at the end of August? What if I invite them to all these different things, to church on the weekend, to surge, to whatever? But what if they say no? What if it doesn't work? What if I bring my friend and nothing changes? What if I, you know, what if I keep asking and keep asking and, and that person, like, they just never want to come. Nothing ever happens. Well, that's, I don't want to do that. It's so discouraging, God. Like, why, why would I do that? And it's easy for us, you know, to play that what if game and to look at things from the negative side. Because again, if, if all the pressure's on us, it's like, ah, oh, I don't know that I can do that, Lord. You know, I know that I'm your creation. I know that I'm your masterpiece, but still this is hard because they're your creation and your masterpiece too, but they, they have free will. They can say no. And so I don't know what's going to happen. But remember, like we're not in it alone and God is with us. But even more than that, his word says that he is for us. Romans 8.31 says, so what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? And I love that verse because even, you know, our own self, sometimes we get in the way. Who can be against us? Sometimes we can be against us, <laughs> but if God is for us, even ourselves, we can't stand in the way. Our insecurities can't stand in the way. Even just like depending on what other people's reactions might be. It doesn't matter because God is for us and all that he's asking us to do is just to be obedient, to step out, to do what he's asking us to do. And here's the thing in life, you're probably going to face some opposition, especially like in what God's calling you to do or just in day-to-day -day life, things might get tough. And, you know, when the what ifs aren't in your favor, just know that God is for you. You know, we can't control other people. We really can't. We can only control ourselves. And so here's what I think we need to do. We need to flip the what if. Instead of, you know, what if this doesn't happen? What if they don't listen? What if they don't believe me? We need to say, what if they do? Like, what if I asked that person to come to church and they said yes? And what if in coming to church, they actually came down maybe to the altar or raised their hand for prayer and they give their life to Jesus? And what if that changes them so dramatically that, you know, maybe one day they're like the next youth pastor here at Impact? Who knows what God can do if we're just willing to say yes. So let's stop looking at those what ifs as negative things and start to look at it from a positive side to flip it and say, hey, God is for us. So what if? I step out and do this? What if I step out and say this? What if I step out and just show kindness to this person? Even when I don't, you know, really see why, or, or even if I don't really like that person. There's all sorts of excuses that we can come up with and say, what if I don't really want to? But what if we just say yes? What if we just do it? Who knows what God could do through that? And what's really awesome about that is because it's not us, God then gets the glory for all of it. And so, like, why would we not want to say, what if? The third thing, the last thing that Moses is insecure about is his ability. Again, he says in Exodus 4.10, but Moses pleaded with the Lord, oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue tied and my words get tangled. Well, boy, doesn't that sound familiar? I mean, in all honesty, like, I did, again, I didn't know that I was going to share that story about myself, but what more of a perfect example in scripture of almost a similar thing working out, you know, where Moses is saying, God, like, all right, maybe I'll go and you've spoken to me, so I'll do it. But here's the thing, like, my mouth's not really working either. So I don't know, like, if this is really going to work out, you might just want to go ahead and go pick somebody else, you know, maybe Pastor Nader or Elijah, like, they're, they're great. They can speak. Just why don't you have them do it? But if God wanted them to do it, he would have come to them. If God wanted to use somebody else for the purpose and calling that he has on your life, he would have gone to them. But he's not doing that. He's coming to you. That's why he came to Moses. He says, I'm coming to you. I want you to do this. And so even with Moses right here, he's like, maybe he's finally figured it all out. You know, I am a child of God. 
I'm God's masterpiece. He loves me. I'm redeemed. But here's the thing. I still can't do it because I get tongue tied. And here's the thing. You know, maybe that's the insecurity that I have. But what's your insecurity? You know, I asked you that earlier. What is, what's that thing that you're like, all right, God, well, you've spoken to me. I, I'm, I think I'm good to go, but I'm not this. I can't do this. I'm not that. Whatever that insecurity is, I just want you to think about that right now. And then I want to just take a look at God's response in verses 11 and 12. It says, then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak and will instruct you in what to say. And so I love that so much because sometimes we're like, but God, I'm not smart enough. God, I'm not talented enough. God, I'm not, you know, a people person enough. I'm not whatever enough, but God just saying, I know that I made you. You don't have to be that enough because I am, I'm with you. I'm for you and I'm in you. I love, um, Zechariah 4, 6, 4, 6, it says, not by might or by power, but by my spirit says the Lord. That's a verse that we've been saying a lot just on the weekends uh, and pastor on services as we just, you know, really are trying to seek revival and seek God to, to bring revival in our church and in this youth ministry and even in our community. And it's not going to happen because of what we can do, because in fact, we're going to fall short every single time if we leave it up to ourselves and our own abilities. But I love Romans eight eleven. It says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. So God is with you, God is for you, but God is in you. And maybe you do have some weaknesses. Maybe you're not the best at this or the best at that, but that's okay because God is in you. His spirit is in you. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that changes everything, is in you. And so, of course, whenever we say, you know, well, we just have to go, we just have to be obedient. There's so much fear, so much worry, so much anxiety that can come because of that. But how much more confidence do we get in knowing that God is with us, that God is for us, and that God is in us? You know, uh, Psalm 73, 26 says, you know, that our flesh may fail, but God is our strength. And I love that because there are going to be times probably, even from this point on, where I go up to speak and for whatever reason, the anxiety, worry, whatever just gets the best of me and my tongue's going to probably go numb again. And if it does, just pray for me. But when that happens, I'm not going to just, well, I guess that's it. You know, I'll, I'll go sit on the bench now, you know, and let somebody else just take it. No, I'm going to push through. I'm going to keep going because I know that God is with me. And this is what he's called me to do. So he's going to equip me and give me everything that I need to do it. I just want to have you guys imagine this like with me. What if I came to you and, you know, every one of your houses and was just like, hey, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a tree. Okay. So I need you, I need you to go first, talk to your parents, you know, just tell them kind of what we're doing. And then we're going to meet, you know, here in a couple weeks, you know, right after impact on Wednesday, uh, we're going to talk about building this tree. I'm going to need you to bring all the money that you have. I need you to bring all the tools that you have. It's kind of like hundred K days, you know? So like if you have hammers, you have nails, you know, whatever, if you don't have it, we can buy it. It's okay. We're going to put all of our funds together. We're going to go to Lowe's. We're going to go to Home Depot, you know, Walmart, wherever we need to go. We're going to get all the supplies that we need because we're going to build this tree and it's going to be awesome, okay? Because we don't do anything just like halfway around here. We're going to do it 100%. It's going to be the best tree ever. And so we go, we do all that, you know, we bring all the supplies back here. Let's just say we're out on the front lawn and we're like putting this tree together, right? And man, say that uh, I'm not very, you know, great at like building things. So I'm going to like help with the leaves. I'm going to cut the leaves out, you know, and there's going to be other people. You guys, you're going to be like putting the trunk together. We need some people um, probably to put together all the roots. We need some of you guys to do the branches, you know, the little twigs and things like that. And actually, if some of you were, would be so helpful, um, could you catch like some squirrels and some like birds maybe so that we can put those in the tree and make it look just even more like lifelike, you know? Uh, and I think that would just be like a great finishing touch. And so let's do all that. Then we're going to put it all together and it's going to look like this awesome, just magnificent, great tree, trunk, roots, branches, leaves, the whole nine, best tree ever. We're going to build it. It's going to be awesome. But here's the thing, there's, we're very limited probably in our ability to do that, right? 
we could probably take all the money we had, all the skills and the talent that we have, we could get all the material and come out and pour in all the blood, sweat, and tears into making that tree a reality. But here's what I know is even in our best efforts, that tree will never compare to anything God can do because God can just say, boom, tree. And there's a tree. You know, even, you know, the very beginning of the Bible, it says that in the beginning, you know, there was just God, right? And then he says, let there be light. And like the power in his voice, just light happened. And so that's the part to me that's so crazy about these verses, that it's not by power, it's not by might, it's not by what we can do in any of what, you know, God is calling us to. And even just in living our lives, we're going to be insecure because we're going to fall short. But you know who's never going to fall short? Jesus. God's never going to come short. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's right there with you. And he can just say, boom, tree. And so whatever he's asking you to do, whatever maybe, you know, you're doing just in your life, maybe you're a baseball player, maybe you're a soccer player, maybe you're in drama, you're in choir, whatever. God wants you to do that to the best of your abilities, but he wants to do it with you because he wants you to reach your friends He might even want you to reach your teachers or your coaches. I don't know who it is that God maybe wants you to go and reach, but what I do know is just like the Israelites were oppressed and distressed and all that stuff, there are people in your life who are in the exact same boat and they need you to go and and to, to bring the hope and the life and the love of Jesus to them. Just like Elijah talked about last week, to be revealers of who Jesus is. And so we, you know, we can either do that or we can just keep making excuses. And maybe we're not the best at some of those things. Maybe, you know, we could make all the excuses in the book. But at the end of the day, we just need to remember that God is with us. God is for us. He is in us. And we just have to be willing to go. One thing before we kind of have a time of reflection. If we go back to Exodus verse 13 and 14, You know, Moses is protesting again, just, if I go to the people and I tell them, you know, that you've sent me, they're going to ask, what is his name? What is God's name? What should I tell them? And I love God's response. God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me. Because how often, you know, would we say, God, I am not blank. You know, maybe just write that down right now. I am not just whatever whatever that might be, your insecurity. I'm not blank. God's response to that tonight is, well, I am. You don't have to be because I am. If you don't feel like maybe you're talented enough, that's okay. If you don't feel like you're smart enough, if you don't feel like you're whatever enough, that's okay. Because he is everything that you need. And he's going to give you everything that you need to do all that he has called you to do. And I also love that, you know, it says that, his name is I am and not that it was I was. Because again, just as we said, he didn't say, you know, that, hey, Joshua, just as I was with Moses, I'll, I'm, I'm probably not going to be with you. Sorry. He says, no, just as I was with Moses, I am with you. And just as he was with Moses and with Joshua, he is with you right now as you're watching this. And so I, I hope that you know that whatever insecurities you have in your life, that God is so much bigger than those insecurities because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is with you just like he was with Joshua, just like he was with Moses. And I believe that he wants to do big and awesome things through you. And so here's what I want to do tonight. I just want to take a little bit of time to reflect just on some of these things, to reflect on maybe what those insecurities in your life might be. And then I just want you to take some time to really invite the Lord in, invite him in, you know, just to your situation, into your life, into your weakness, and just ask him to help you. You know, surrender those insecurities to him. Ask him to help you to be more obedient, to really step out in faith, because I promise you every time you do, he's going to show up. So we'll be back in just a few minutes to close this out.
Come on, let's sing. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all, you can have it all. Here I am, here I am. You can have it all. You Come on, that's it. Let's sing it again. Well, hey, thanks again just for like being here, for watching, for tuning in. I just want to pray for every one of you guys that as you continue just to go forward in your lives this week, next week, you know, the 4th of July, everything that's going on, um, that you would be able to do so with confidence and with security and knowing that God is with you, he's for you, and he's in you. So let's pray. Jesus, we just thank you for tonight, God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing, for the purpose that you've put in our lives. And so, God, I just pray that for every student, every leader, every parent, every sibling who is watching this message, God, that they would feel encouraged, God, not to, to stop and to be paralyzed by the insecurity that they may have and to say, BRB crying, but God, that they would be full force into what you have for them, that they would be obedient, God, to the call on their lives because you are with them, Jesus. You are equipping them for all that they need. And so we thank you for that. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Hey, again, thanks for being here. We love you guys. See you guys next week.